an academic conference is coming up that you want to present at, and you're thinking to yourself, should I submit a conference poster or paper? Which one should you choose? Let's chat about it here today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up everybody, my name is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to expand your career in academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a moment before we get started to like this video, share it with your friends, colleagues, and students, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so that you get notifications every time we post new original content, and also be sure to follow us at these social media accounts. So you got a big conference coming up. Maybe it's a local one, a regional one, a national one, even an international conference that you've maybe always wanted to speak at. Maybe it's even your first conference, in which case we actually have another video that I'll link in the description below in terms of how to be able to kind of get prepped to attend uh, a big academic conference. So hopefully you can watch that, that'll help you out too. But in the meanwhile, obviously the first step is to be able to get the thing accepted, right? Absolutely critical. Uh, so one of the things that you got to decide, and it's a hard thing to decide, especially if this is your first go around or your first go around at a big conference, is when you're submitting a proposal, they're usually going to give you the option on the submission portal to submit as a poster or as a paper. Now, the big difference between this one is that if it's a poster presentation, you're literally going to format this giant poster, usually roll it up into something that looks like a bazooka tube. You're going to bring it with you usually on the plane, gonna get off, you're gonna be carrying it with you, you're gonna sleep next to it in bed probably that night to make sure nobody else touches it, and then you're going to put it up, stand next to it, and then people are going to kind of walk by during a poster session where there are usually dozens if not hundreds of other posters and other people standing next to them, and then people will ask you questions. And that's it! right? Then you have a paper presentation, which is basically like just like giving a talk. And usually these last around 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, now, in some cases, these paper talks can be significantly longer, especially if you're presenting multiple papers within the same uh, conference section or symposium, as they call them. Uh, however, this is something where usually it's just going to be one paper and you giving it to be able to talk about the findings. Maybe it's based on your master's thesis, your doctoral dissertation, your undergraduate capstone study, whatever it happens to be. But that question remains, poster or paper? My answer for you is always paper. I have given one poster since the age of 18 uh, and it was because I was required to because I was given a travel award and that was part of what I had to do was present the poster. Um, I want to make three points here, right? Uh, and, and each one of these points is going to be pretty simple, but I really just want to be very encouraging to you on this because I understand, especially if, if this is maybe one of your first times doing it, that there can be, you know, this almost imposter syndrome of like, yeah, but you know, I'm not at the level yet where I, where I should be doing that or I'm uncomfortable um, giving, uh, giving talks. You know, public speaking is not kind of my forte. I, I much prefer kind of the poster because the poster can speak for itself, etc. Or some people think it's like a rite of passage or that you have to earn your stripes by doing posters for first. Nonsense. The whole thing is nonsense, I'm telling you right now. Uh, anybody who's telling you that it really has no idea what they're talking about, respectfully. They don't, okay? So the first thing is to be able to overcome imposter syndrome. Uh, this can be really tough because, again, people think to themselves, who am I to be you know, sitting next to many times much more senior academics and researchers who are presenting the findings and sometimes they're much larger, maybe much more potentially influential pieces as yours. But the real question is, who are you not to be? Right? Everybody needs these examples. Everybody needs these opportunities to be able to get to that next level. And remember that no one else will be as big of an advocate for you and your career as you are going to be for yourself. It's critical that you be the one to really grab the bull by the horns and go after this. Uh, everybody in academia suffers at some stage from imposter syndrome. And it doesn't go away even if it's something where you've been in the field for a hot second. You know, if you've been in the field for a while, 
but there's really no reason to just choose a poster. Uh, frankly, when you do a poster presentation, you look incredibly awkward standing in front of this poster. Uh, people are trying not to make eye contact with you. Uh, if they do, it's super awkward, and then sometimes maybe they'll ask a question, and then they kind of want to get away from you as quickly as possible. Uh, one thing that I used to do, which is a true story, I had one that one poster, I just wanted to see what would happen, so uh, you know, the name of the poster was pretty good, and I like to think it was formatted all right, uh, but nobody would come when I was standing in front of it, so I'd like hide around the side, and then people would come and look, because they thought it was interesting, and then I would like, you know, sneak back around and ask people if they had any questions, because that was like the only way to be able to get it done. Uh, people simply don't want to approach you for whatever reason, not because it's you, but because it's an awkward human interaction, right? Versus with the paper, everybody's sitting down, listening respectfully, and you can articulate your ideas more fully, and you have more time to be able to do it in front of more people, and a big reason that you go to conferences is to expand your social capital and networking, and I think that it's a much more effective way to expand your network. Number two is you gotta understand that you're never too young or inexperienced to give a paper presentation. All right, again, this is kind of part of that imposter syndrome thing, but you're just never too young. The first time that I gave a poster presentation, I, uh, paper presentation, I was 18 years old, I was a freshman in college, it was at a regional conference that I'd been brought to by my undergraduate supervisor. Great experience, it was a child development thing that I was speaking on, and I had just like an absolute blast, and I was so nervous, my heart was palpitating like crazy. Uh, now, you know, I can give talks in front of thousands and thousands of people at the time, you put me in front of four people, I'd probably have a panic attack, right? But you build up to it, right? And this is a critical step, right? And in terms of inexperience, how else are you supposed to get the experience? Just like a lot of jobs these days, I feel so bad for, you know, uh, you know, uh, people that I know who are just getting out of college and they're applying for jobs and the job's like, well, you need at least five years experience. And people are like, how the heck am I supposed to get these five years experience for this entry level job? I know it can be really frustrating. This is kind of similar. But again, you have to take the bull by the horns. What's the worst that can happen? Usually if you apply to do a paper, there'll be a button there that you can tick, right, that you can press that says, uh, if it's not accepted as a paper, yes, I'm open to, to accepting it as a poster. Then why not do it as a paper, right? Uh, I totally understand, it's the number one fear, right, in, in America at least, is public speaking. So I totally get that, right? But this is, a, think about it like exposure and response prevention, right? Expose yourself to the stressor and prevent yourself from running away, which would be the normal response, okay? Uh, it's gonna be a healthy thing in the long term, I guarantee you, whether you stay in academia or not. Okay, and point number three is that pilot or small sample projects are fine, are fine for paper presentations. It all has to do with context. If you're making unique points, if you've tested a unique hypothesis, if you are adding a building block to the Lego house of your field, uh, then it deserves to, to be heard by other people. Now, I've had papers uh, presented with as few as 26 people, but it was a national survey of a Middle Eastern country on a very niche topic, right? Or I have had, you know, papers that have been given on sample sizes that are literally, you know, literally, literally many, many, many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. And so because of that, it's not that those two are created equal in terms of sample size, but they're created equal in terms of they're both making what's perceived to be a valuable contribution to the field. And, you know, per usual, especially if you have a small sample size or you don't have like a crazy number of analyses, saying that it's a pilot study and really making it clear that you acknowledge the limitations is going to be an essential part of that presentation. But just because something's a pilot in nature or has a small sample size doesn't mean that you shouldn't just go for it in the first place. I still recommend doing a paper presentation. All right, everybody, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this episode. As always, I encourage you to contact me via the website below if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career mentoring where we can talk further about your career. I can kind of alleviate any stress about conference presentations and give you a lot of one-on-one -on -one feedback in terms of your presentation and how we can make help you make the biggest splash at this conference that you're hoping to present at. Now, in the meanwhile, please like and share this video with your friends, colleagues, and students, and subscribe to our channel. If you comment below, we'd really appreciate it, even to just say, you know, great job, or whatever. It helps us with the algorithm, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, but in the meanwhile, please remember, guys, to be able to get out there. I say it every time, but I really do mean it. Get out there. 
I'm really encouraging you to get out there and take chances just like we've been talking about today. And with all of this knowledge, I truly believe in you that you can be your best self. Signing off for today. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.